Isabella Stewart Gardner. Novelist Henry James once said that our guest, quote, is not a woman, she is a locomotive with a Pullman car attached, end quote. A New York Society magazine described her as, quote, the brightest, breeziest woman in Boston, end quote, and also said she is, quote, the idol of men and the envy of women, end quote. Let us welcome Isabella Stewart Gardner, founder of Boston's Fenway Courthouse Museum, which she had designed and built to showcase her extensive collection of Renaissance and Rococo art. Oh, it's you. For a moment, I thought you were Harry. My dear friend, Harry Sleeper, who came to fetch me this morning at the planned for hour of nine o'clock. We sh had a cup of tea and exchanged gossip and current events, as well as the fluctuations of financial markets. Then we finalized our plans when I shall be his house guest for a fortnight at his abode, Little Beauport in Gloucester, on Boston's North Shore. Now Harry has graciously said that I could help him plan an end of summer soiree. We shall have a special dinner, each invite our guests. Now my guests will include John Singer Sargent, the portraitist who has recently returned from painting landscapes of the American West. Another guest, Mr. Okakura Kokuzo, Japanese poet and philosopher, who has been advising me on arranging my artifacts in the Asian room. Mr. Kokuzo is also advising the Museum of Fine Arts on their East Asia collection. Another guest, my friend and neighbor, Frederick Law Olmsted, who is cultivating his legacy with the emerald necklace in Boston, shall be accompanied by his lovely wife, Margaret. Also, my middle nephew, Amory Gardner, has promised that he will attend. He has been so preoccupied with his responsibilities as headmaster at Groton Academy, where he also teaches Greek. Then, after we finish dinner, the guests will adjourn to Harry's patio, where we shall read Tennyson aloud, overlooking Gloucester Harbor under the August full moon. And then, the next day, since Harry is ensconced with his plans for organizing the Society for the Preservation of New England Antiquities, or SPINEA, the acronym, he has also enlisted the help of his colleague, William Appleton, who, well, the two men, I give them great credit for organizing historic preservation in our region. Both of their homes will be on the roster. Whereas I have maintained my house museum, Fenway Court, to be independent. That is why I am eagerly returning home to put the finishing touches on renovations. Now that Fenway Court has been open, the past seven years, I have felt it's necessary. For the grand opening, New Year's Day, 1903, such a splendid evening was planned. I had chosen 
members of the Boston Symphony Orchestra to play 45 minutes sharp. And then the court doors and arch windows opened with a scene that was indeed strange in midwinter Boston. There were lanterns and lit candles throughout the courtyard. There was the fragrance of fresh blooms that wafted through the air in midwinter Boston. And both the sarcophagus and Arabian fountain had gentle trickling of water. Of course, some guests declared that they either had a headache or had a previous engagement and left promptly after the concert. But for those who stayed, we sipped champagne and nibbled on tiny donuts, two of my favorite foods, and had a perfectly delightful time. When my guests were about to depart, I stood on top of the double-sided jade staircase as each single file ascended. I shook their hand and then they left Fenway Court. This truly began a new chapter in my life. Within three months, I met Harry and his circle of friends up in Gloucester at the high tide mark of Eastern Point Boulevard. Now, with these renovations, I have been engaged starting over the winter. Um, I did a foreshortening of the music room, so it is only located on the second level. This has created the Spanish cloister on the first. At the far end is the alcove, in which I have just obtained a very early work by Mr. Sargent. Actually, this work that I have just obtained, I like almost as much as the portrait that Mr. Sargent did of me more than a quarter of a century ago. You see, after I had procured Van Gogh's self-portrait, I was inspired to have my own done. It's just that I wanted the right person to do it. So when Mr. Sargent was stateside, settling his parents' estate in Cambridge and taking commissions for his first American exhibition at the St. Batolph Club, I invited him to my then home at 150-152 Beacon Street that winter of 1887, where I sat and I sat. Oh, it was so difficult for me to be still during that time. I was so eager to see my likeness on canvas. Of course, this irritated Mr. Sargent. It was not until he had me standing while he stood at his easel and painted. We were in complete silence, in true accord. And when my portrait by Mr. Sargent was unveiled at the St. Batolph exhibition in the spring of 88. It did cause tongues to wag. Then when my poor dear husband heard the men at the club repeating gossip and vicious rumor that the men had heard from their wives during the ladies' tea party. My husband was so incensed that to protect my honor, he declared that 
Sargent's portrait of me was to be struck from the exhibition and never to be shown again during his lifetime. And so, to honor my dear husband's request, Mr. Sargent's portrait of me hangs in the Gothic room at Fenway Court, which is technically closed to the public until my demise. Oh, it is true that I opened the Gothic room for special occasions, mostly family gatherings for my birthday and the holidays. We have dinners, feasts at the long table. My house museum is open two weeks of every year. Two of the holiest weeks, the week of Easter, which often coincides with my birthday, and the week of Christmas. Now, I have checked the calendar for next year, and my birthday does fall on Easter week. So, we shall have one of the banquet gatherings. Also, I have made another change. It has occurred to me in the past six months that having free admission, well, people do not always appreciate what is free. So I have decided to charge one dollar per person admission. I hope that you do not consider that to be too steep, but it has helped to keep the riffraff out. Now, the riffraff I refer to, in part, is some of those Simmons College students just across Palace Road. <laughs> Not that I have any objection to female education. Oh, no, I am a rather staunch supporter. It's just that some of these students have taken tours of my house museum and, well, they were rather rude and did not have much polish. So, if any of you have been attempting to tour Fenway Court for more than three successive seasons unsuccessfully, I do invite you to come, be my guest. We shall have tea in my residence on the fourth floor. My house museum is willed to the city of Boston for the education and enjoyment of the public forever. This reflects the motto that I designed in the shield inscribed, say mon plaisir. It is my pleasure, and all of Boston has reigned. Oh, Harry, there you are. I've been waiting ever so patiently. Let us adjourn to your museum. I bid you all a fond adieu.